Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week, this final week of the year 2022. And we're going to go jet streaking today. And if you're as old as I am, you remember when streaking was a little bit of a fad uh, way back in the uh, 70s. So I want to assure you that the atmosphere will remain fully clothed uh, during this entire presentation. And it is suitable for all ages and you have absolutely nothing to worry about. All right, so let's take a look at a hypothetical map of North America here. And uh, we've got a jet stream uh, that is uh, coming in off the west coast of Canada, diving down into the central plains and then coming back up along the east coast. It really doesn't matter where that jet stream is. We're just, you know, assigning an arbitrary location uh, to explain the topic that we're addressing today. Okay, so within that jet stream where the winds are blowing faster than they are at other places, uh, there is an area where the wind is blowing even faster than that, okay? And this is a little pocket, of, if you will, of very fast-moving air, and we call that a jet streak, okay? A jet streak is an area of higher-speed air within the jet stream, okay? So that's what we call that. Okay, now, we've talked about these isobars in the upper atmosphere, but uh, what we do in meteorology is we take a look at the height that you have to go up to to reach a given pressure. And the reason that's done is that with the numerical models, some of the calculations are a little bit easier when you deal with constant pressure surfaces as opposed to constant height surfaces. So it's just something about the science that that's the way we do things, okay? So, and, and it's just like isobars at the ground. The closer they are together, the stronger the wind is gonna blow. So here you see those lines, those height lines, if you will, getting tighter together in the middle. And to the north, we have lower heights, and they're actually, in technical terms, referred to as geopotential height. Now, and, and then higher down to the below the jet stream, okay? Now, think about potential energy here. Uh, and I often talk about this uh, a couple of times. People would say, like, when there's a really bad plane crash, uh, they'll say, well, how, if there was a god, how could he allow that to happen? And my answer is, we're the ones that decided it was important to get from point A to point B quicker, okay? And so as soon as we decided that it was worth the risk of leaving the ground, our potential energy increased. Potential energy mathematically is defined as the mass times the gravitational constant times the height above the ground, okay? So obviously if the mass stays the same and gravity stays the same, the higher up you go, the more potential energy you have. And then if something goes wrong with that airplane, then all that potential energy is immediately converted to kinetic energy as it comes back down to the ground, okay? So kinetic energy has to do with actual movement, potential energy, think about it as potential movement, okay? So because you don't have to go up as high up here to reach a given pressure, these are lower geopotential heights, and down here you have to go up higher, and so it's higher geopotential height. Okay, you with me so far? So, where those lines are most tightly packed together is where the winds are blowing the strongest, and we're going to call that a jet streak. Now, I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Air Parcel. Okay, and Mr. Air Parcel is a happy little guy, and he is moving along in the flow, moving along in the jet stream, and he starts to approach this jet stream where the wind is blowing faster than it is where he is currently located, okay? So here comes Mr. Air Parcel, and he moves into the middle of that jet streak, and he is gaining velocity, okay, as he heads right into the core of that streak. Now, the air that's blowing along the northern edge of that jet streak is not experiencing any big changes, and the one along the southern end of the jet streak is not experiencing any big changes. But if you're right in the middle here where Mr. Air Parcel is, he's experiencing a lot of acceleration. So the kinetic energy is increasing, and the total energy has to stay the same. Total energy has to be conserved. So if the kinetic energy is increasing, the potential energy needs to decrease. And where do we have lower potential energy? Up here, where we have lower geopotential heights. So the air begins to cross the lines and go toward lower geopotential height. Why is that important? Because in the upper atmosphere, the air is beginning to converge here, and if it's converging up there, that means it sinks and then spreads out of the ground. So that would be a fair weather pattern in most cases, okay? 
Here, it's diverging, and where you have diverging aloft, the air has to rise to replace it, and when air rises, you get the formation of clouds and precipitation if there's enough moisture present. Okay, so now, let's reintroduce Mr. Air Parcel, and he is right in the middle of that jet streak, right where the air is moving the most rapidly, and now, he begins to move east, and he's de-accelerating, or uh, he's getting slower, okay, or he's moving slower. So... Like the other situation, this guy up here is not experiencing any big changes of speed, nor is this one down here, but where Mr. Air Parcel was, he's getting slower at a significant rate. So the kinetic energy is decreasing, and total energy has to be conserved, right? Which means the potential energy needs to decrease. Where is there greater potential energy? Down here. And so the air begins to cross the lines toward higher geopotential height. And so we now have divergence in the upper atmosphere here and convergence down in here. So let's see how that translates into the weather. So here's our jet streak, doesn't matter where it is. We're gonna split it up into four quadrants, okay? And the upper left and the lower right quadrants, we're going to say that we have upper level convergence in both of those. We just showed that with the arrows. So where the air is coming together at the top of the atmosphere, it then sinks. And when the air sinks, it warms up and dries out, and then it spreads out at the ground. And we associate that with high pressure, okay? In the other two quadrants, we have upper level divergence. And when the air diverges at the top of the atmosphere, it comes together at the bottom and goes up. And that means the formation of clouds and precipitation. So let's stop looking at it from the standpoint of the upper levels of the atmosphere and start looking at it from the standpoint of the lower levels, okay, which I just explained, but now I'm showing it to you graphically, is that if you're in the upper left, and, and actually, uh, if you want to get more scientific, we call this the entrance region of the jet streak. If the air is blowing along like this, it is entering the jet streak, so this is the entrance region. So the left entrance region has low-level divergence or fair weather, and the left, I'm sorry, the right exit region of the jet streak also has low-level divergence. Now, if you are in the left exit region of a jet streak, then you have low-level convergence, which leads to rising motion, and the same thing here, and we would call this the right entrance region of the jet streak, and so you would get lower-level convergence and rising motion there as well, okay? Now, it gets even more complicated if the flow is curved, okay? And I didn't even want to start to go into that, but this is your basic jet streak model where you have the four quadrants, uh, the two entrance regions and the two exit regions, and what causes the changes in the upward and downward motion depending on where you are, which quadrant you're located in. Okay, I hope that made a little bit of sense. And again, it was a family show. No clothing was gotten rid of, and so everything is just fine. All right, that's bonus weather video number one for this week. This is last week of 2022. We'll have another one for you coming up on Friday. have no idea what the topic will be, but I'll figure it out between now and then. And another daily weather update coming up for you again tomorrow. So we hope you'll join us for that. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.